Good evening, everybody. Welcome to episode 25 of Coombe TV. Episode 24 was seven hours long. I can assure you, no matter how much our special guest tonight will try to make it last that long, we're not going to let them, okay? So <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be a normal show. We're going to review the racing got back underway. How cool was that? We got it going. Thank you for those that joined us for the live uh, show. I know it wasn't suddenly like a Motors TV live, and, and I appreciate the uh, the love and support from you all that appreciated what it was. Instead of it just being audio commentary, it brought some pictures to you live. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? Could we get con uh, spectators coming back? Are we still going to do something like that? All to be discussed. Frankly, I think everybody's still trying to wait from the days of just making that day work. And what an incredible effort by everybody at the circuit that made this work. Everybody at Castle Coombe Circuit, everybody at Castle Coombe Racing Club that made the day work. And honestly, the, the feedback from Motorsport UK was absolutely glowing. You know, we were one of only three circuits in the whole country that was running something for this first day. Uh, since, you know, we're talking, what, October last year was the last time that we ran a race meet. And, and suddenly in July, we're getting going again. Some of the drivers, I think it was the uh, uncaging of the beasts, so to speak, but uh, and not helped by the weather. What typical, wasn't it, that we got the weather? But it was brilliant. So today we're going to uh, have a look through some of the results and, uh, and 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 really review what's happened for the uh, for that opening race day and uh, and get loads more. Uh, Steve Lansley, have you washed that T-shirt yet? Yes, mate, I have. Smells good. Uh, Tim Perry, dilly dilly evening, folks. Uh, I like the fact that uh, Nick Workman's already saying Mama and Papa Mason in the house and Lee White's been waiting for this. Chaz Draco, hello, mate. I'm, uh, I've been commentating with him in the uh, the virtual world and I'm actually going to be commentating, co-commentating with him in the real world at Snetterton this weekend. So uh, everything's just gone, gone wild now for me. It's uh, here, there and everywhere, as you'd expect. Uh, <laughs> I do love this one. I'm going to put this one straight up. Uh, he always jumps in with a comment, doesn't he? Uh, uh, Chris Mason, who's on tonight, Dorsey? <laughs> we know who it is, mate. Uh, Mike Cotton, thank you for your comment. The I good question mark. It is, mate. It is. Suddenly, it took till... Crikey, what was it? Monday afternoon. Monday afternoon. Monday morning, it was still playing up, but it was getting better morning after morning before Chris Mason tells me up because uh, Chris Mason and uh, Dr. Snoo Smith were absolute geniuses. They looked after me uh, on the race day, and I was told that if it wasn't better by Sunday, I had to go to A&E. It wasn't better by Sunday, but I really didn't want to go to A&E, if I'm honest. Um, and it was a little bit better. And I had the philosophy that if it's got a little bit better, then I don't need to go. We're going in the right direction. It was a little bit better Monday morning. And then all of a sudden, I think I did uh, a, a, another wash of the eye sort of after lunch on the Monday and it went. So it's great. I've still got sort of hay fevery feelings every now and again, but I've taken the tablet and it seems to be good. So thank you, Mike. Uh, for your, your your concern or your mocking, whichever one it is. Delete is applicable. Uh, Rob Drew, evening all, evening, mate. Uh, good to see you all coming in. Uh, it's great to see you. So I should have been joined by my partner in crime, Tom Davis, tonight as well. But uh, sadly, I did get uh, a message through from his better half um, of him crashed out, not feeling well tonight. So I don't think we're going to see him. He may show up, but we're going to assume not. And he needs to get some sleep and get himself sorted. And as you can imagine, they've been flat out, which is what I say. The whole circuit and racing club team have been just incredible to a person to make it happen. And, you know, it leads us towards the 1st of August that we can go and do it all again. Now, in terms of that team, one that is close to all of our hearts, and I know it because I've said it plenty of times, You've all said it plenty of times as well uh, during the course of the shows. And it is, we know we show the love. Well, there it is, that side. I can't do it when I'm in reverse. The Orange Army. So the writing in orange deliberately is that we give all our love to the Orange Army. But we also give our love to the Green Army because the medical crews are absolutely vital in every way and they had to do it very very differently during this one and they had to you know clean everything we had extra buildings assigned to, to medicals and many of us thankfully don't know everything that's uh, that, that actually goes on behind the scenes and and you know hopefully for many of you that will stay the, the, the right the right way but as you see at the bottom we've got Chris and Emma Mason 
Uh, and I'm going to get them to explain their exact roles. But first of all, let me bring them into the show. Hello. Hello. That's all right. I was, I was a bit worried, teasing me there, that we couldn't hear. And it is the, the superstars. I feel bad now because we got your names along the bottom there, almost blocking you out there. You've only got one chin there now, Chris. <laughs> I'm allowed to say that. I'm allowed to say that. I'm allowed to crack that joke. You, you've hidden him deliberately, Emma, haven't you? <laughs> there we go. That's perfect. Uh, good evening. Good evening to you both. And I've got to say, if, if for anybody who hasn't recognised it, they're actually in the med centre right now, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Just because it's easier. <laughs> and that includes... Be yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that includes you've even brought Litlin along with you as well. So we well, may have... Unlike Tom, we haven't got another West Wing to get go into, so... <laughs> or an understairs or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, I've got you. Um, just quickly bring up some of the comments. Uh, Becky Hill, hi, Becky. Dilly, dilly, dozy. Glad your eyes okay. Just keep on looking after it. I will. She's been, uh, from her uh, optician side of things, she's been, uh, she's been very strict with me. So thank you for that. Darren Duffield, has it stopped raining at Coombe? Do you know what? I'm going to quickly bring up uh, something for a second. Uh, based on Darren Duffield, he sent me a fabulous uh, photograph. I'm just going to quickly bring up. Look at that! It shows uh, that is him in the number nine car there, and uh, and getting out there from. Is it? No, that's not Darren Duffield in the red car, is it? I can't. I'm trying to remember what Darren was in now. Sorry, Darren. It's. Uh, I should be able to remember, and I'll be able to uh, tell you very, very quickly what you're in. You're in a Mini Cooper, so you're one of the uh, the minis further back. Sorry, uh, Darren. The one one nine. Mini Cooper. I think it's that grey one, possibly, at the back there, but I might be wrong. But anyway, it shows how close it was within the hot hatches up at uh, Corrie, by the looks of that, and also how wet it was. So uh, ha th there's a question, really, uh, for you guys, because you're there. Has it actually stopped raining at Coombe yet? No, it's still raining at the moment. Very oh. wet. A bit drizzly. Oh, it's true. They've had a difficult time with the track days, haven't they, sadly, this I week as well. So. Uh, Charlie, Kethro, hiya. When can we go racing? Well, you've already missed it, mate. We already went racing on Saturday, just gone. That's why we've got a review. Keep your eye out. I'm not sure what uh, you, you race in, but uh, uh, it means that it's all happening. I'm at Snetterton this weekend for two days' worth of commentary as well. Uh, oh, I like this one, is that we've got one of our superstars, Ray Ferrari up Ferguson. I watched all seven hours, Dorsey. You hero, mate. You absolute hero. Wishing I was there, so I'm booked up for Saloons and Hot Hatch next meeting, and I can't wait. And you and your helpers did a fantastic job with the coverage, Ray. We can't say me and my helpers. In fairness, I'm one of the helpers. It was them and me as one of the helpers, to be fair. But uh, thank you very much for that, Ray. You're a superstar. Um, Pete Spiller, obviously, um, that's uh, Dave Spiller's dad, as we actually know him as. Uh, many thanks to every member behind the scenes who made for a very smoothly run day. Good comment here. Becky Hill says, one of the orange army. She says, the green, green army rocks. Are we allowed to call you that, Chris? Chris? Yeah? You want right? That's all right, then. That's all right, then. Um, one of the racers yeah. from, from the saloons who did, uh, him and his brother had a cracking race uh, in, the, uh, in the saloons, in the second race in particular. Chris Hignall. Evening, everyone. Hope you've all recovered from Saturday. Withdrawal symptoms, I think it's called, mate, to be fair. Um, Paul Wiltshire, great coverage of the race day. Well done. Couldn't be there as self-isolating. Very frustrating. Oh, you know, sympathies with you, but well done for, for staying disciplined, Chris. I know you're very, uh, you know, very pro on being disciplined if you need to isolate, aren't you? Oh, we got, we got te technical issues. The Wi-Fi is uh, not great on them there, but we'll keep going. Um, yeah. So you Oh, that's a shame. We had it great earlier, but we're on the uh, the, the the med center Wi-Fi. Uh, Tim Perry, they are the Green Brigade. Ah, okay, so we go with Green Brigade. Uh, Rob Jones, evening from uh, Sunny Radstock. Uh, enjoy the gin, Dorsey Lewis. I am, mate. I am. I am. Sorry for taking you out in the sim race the other day as well. Uh, Russell Pointer Brown says, evening all. Thanks for featuring two very dedicated people. 100% it had to be done. Superstars is the right word. Uh, are you just saying that, Russell, because between the two of them, we've got your company appearing there as well. We've got the on-pole. I'm only joking, mate. I know that's not why you're saying it. But look, 
You're up in lights as well, Russell Pointer Brown. <laughs> but rightly so, uh, superstars. Uh, Chris Pearson, uh, one of the togs, and he was uh, he, brilliant to see you. Uh, I think that what was the, the comment that you were part of the commentary team, Chris Pearson, because you were commenting so much. I will never knock that. I love it when you guys get involved. Hey, hey, Dorsey, Saturday was awesome. Apologies for my ugly mug being on the screen so much with the comments. Never apologize. This is what this is all about, is that we're supposed to be able to uh, to, to get involved. And, and I'm going to say this one to Chris more than you, Emma, because you kind of wait for the right time to speak. Chris never waits. He just talks all the time on the... Dorsey, on the... Really struggling. Oh, no, really? Yeah, it's really breaking up. I don't know whether you've got anywhere that's better signal around there. Well, go and have a hunt. Do you want to put a We've got a router, literally. There. Oh, really? And yet, when yeah. you were in the radio room, it was better, bizarrely, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. Uh, well, right. let me... Uh, bear with us, guys. We, we will, we will. Phone. We will indeed. So we'll we'll keep uh, we'll keep going. Uh, Gerald Howe, uh, twas definitely a wet and bedraggling day. That's well that's well described, Gerald. I like that one. Uh, I love the fact that Mike Bland in his uh, his green Peugeot from memory that Mike was on. Uh, great day. Roll on the first uh, to do it all again. Uh, and one of your old crew, Lee White, says lots of love to the Masons. Uh, absolutely, we got to hope that we get enough of a signal that we can actually uh, speak to them properly. We did do a test earlier, I promise you. Uh, nice, I don't... nice to hear from Lee. Yes, exactly, and uh, I, you know he's he's gone off to uh, sort of pastures uh, pastures more bedraggled these days at the minute, isn't he? But he's still uh, classed as one of the crew. I don't know whether you know uh, this person personally, but Lonis uh, Liseos. Apologies that I probably butchered that. Greetings from Greece. Hello, mate. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, one of our uh, winners from the day in that lightning quick Vauxhall Tigra. Totally agree. Everyone at the circuit did an amazing job under a tricky situation. Well done all and well done to you, Wally. You did brilliant. One of the crazy Orange Army, dilly dilly yes. guys. Oh, Mr. dear. Rogers. There, there was a lot of hard work from everyone to, to, to get the weekend running a lot. Um, um, it, you know, especially Les and the team not on his own. Yeah, and Les uh, obviously had a very busy, uh, busy morning as well, didn't they? Where we suddenly had four posts snapped for them to repair as well. Oh, he did that in his sleep. Yeah, true, true. And he did as usual. It'll be 45 minutes and then, I don't know, 30 minutes later and they were done. But he uh, he always puts the allow it, uh, allowance in. Uh, Mark Sutton in that MG that you can see there, still buzzing from Saturday. Brilliant day. Glad to hear it. And that's great. That's coming from someone that had the uh, the disappointment of his alternator failing in the second race, which put him out and yet still buzzing. That's what we like to hear, Mark. Uh, thank you for, for those comments. Uh, Wendy Hignall, I didn't get to see you, Wendy, in person, did I? But I saw you through the window at one point. It was great to be there on Saturday. Everyone did a great job. Uh, <laughs> there you go, uh, Chris. Russell Pointer Brown says, cheers for the free advert, although he's he's lost it now. Uh, Chris Pearson invoices in the post. Yeah, right. <laughs> In, in uh, post, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lewis Bird, not a problem, Chris. Thank you. He's appreciating that. I, find some wifi, but... Okay, mate, that's fine, which is good because we want to have a wander around at some point, I think, anyway. Um, only meant to be a laugh, the real thing on the first. Can't wait. Ah, does that mean you're coming out, Lewis, on the first? That that would be good to see. Oh, this is interesting. Ben Oggs, you're going to be out on the first. I thought that you'd uh, largely got rid of that because you failed the, uh, the, the noise test and. I thought that you'd thrown the, the car and everything else out the pram. It'd be great to see you back there, mate. Is it going to be in the red uh, Vauxhall Astra? That's the big question for me. Um, one of the uh, the the camp softcore. I'm just still talking, Chris. So don't panic, mate. We, we can. Uh, yeah, no worries. We can. That's. Uh, we'll keep going until that's... we get a good good sig good enough signal, and you're happy. Oh, well, we're back to the uh, to the on pole advertising it's, now. I see. It's Oh, really? Yeah. Ah, is, this, is, that, is that on the phone? Yeah. 
So we might have a change of device. Okay. Um, don't, don't is there any don't... chance you can pop us back to the green room? I'll pop in the phone. Absolutely fine, mate. Yeah, and you've got the link. Just follow the link. Everybody's fine. We've still got plenty yeah. of stuff to cover. Don't you panic, guys. Just relax. It's cool. This is supposed to be fun. So we'll pop uh, those guys into the green room. They'll be back. We've still got racing to, 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 to cover. The joys of technology. It's, it's what we love. It sort of really tests us out. Uh, Stuart Tinker Taylor. Hello, Chris, from one of the camps. Softcore. Great racing from the Fuffers. You know that made me laugh. And it made Diz uh, laugh, who, of course, runs the, uh, the, the, the National Formula 4 Championship. And he loves that. And there's every chance that they're going to be calling that now. The Fuffers, the Formula 4s. I absolutely love that. Um, oh, there we go. There's uh, Lonus. Keep up the good work. Do you accept rotary cars in Castle Coombe? Well, we've we had the uh, the um, I don't know whether Anthony Weeks is likely to be watching because he had the was it the Mazda RX7 that's uh, rotary, isn't it? And uh, and he was out there racing at some point. They just don't seem to be particularly reliable. But uh, as far as I'm aware, it's not out of the question. Uh, good to hear Lewis Bird confirming he should be out on the first. Uh, and <laughs> Ben Oggs, yes, I did have a moment. Toys did go flying. I know, mate, because I watched it and you went out on your boat to chill yourself out, didn't you, mate? It's, I say it in jest because it was all good fun. Uh, and I love that one. And that's that's the personalities we like. But the Astra will be out on the 1st of August, the red Astra GTE. So that's awesome. Um, let me just see what happens. I'm going to bring you back in. Hello, is this a different device now? <laughs> That's really, really good. That is, we've got a great signal this time. So, uh, uh thank yeah. you. I've just That's been corrected. Right. It's the RX8, not the RX7. Thanks, Dave. I knew I was wrong as I was saying it, but I couldn't remember. But yes, uh, you guys have now got a better signal, haven't you? Yeah, that's off my phone. So I think I need a new iPad. If Apple want to donate one to us, that'd be great. Yeah, there we go. The uh, the medical centre at, uh, at Castle Coombe, the Masons in particular, the, the, the heroes that are. Right, now, now that we've got you here, guys, give me the uh, succinct description. What are your both your titles and your roles? Well, um, that's all gone over. Uh, so I'm medical center coordinator so i look after the general day-to-day -day stuff making sure that we've got consumables in um, making sure that the place is up together and sort of fit for purpose um that's about it really yeah. organizing some training and things like that um sadly we lost our our, our training manager um, about 18 months ago ernie hatcher um, and uh, he would he would uh, do a lot of the arranging of the training, but um, sadly I've had to take that on as well as all my other bits and bobs and trying to study and take care of the um, the nightmare that is Joshua. <laughs> yeah. That's Mini Mason. Before anybody questions yeah. that, by the way, that yeah. sounded really bad there, but that's Mini Mason they're saying there. <laughs> Uh, and Emma, um, yourself? Yeah, so my role is basically I support Chris in sort of doing the day-to-day -day running. Um, but on a race day, I'm what's known as the ambulance liaison. So what that involves is making sure that sort of the reception area runs okay, keeping up communications on the radios, and then um, sort of liaising with the ambulances. So if we need to take um, an injured driver or a spectator to the hospital, then making sure that we go to the right hospital for their needs um, and working with the doctors to ensure that that happens really smoothly um, and between the crews and everything. So, yeah, that's kind of my role. Wow. So, uh, you know, hence everybody is, you know, the love was pouring in earlier, both absolutely vital. If I can ask them, what do you do, you both do outside of that from a race day? What is your day-to-day, your -day, which clearly you guys have been like stupidly busy throughout this whole lockdown and everything? Yeah. Um, so my day job, I'm trained as a radiographer and I specialise in sonography. So that's ultrasound examinations. So I do obstetrics, which is babies, um, gynaecology, lady bits, um, and general abdominal stuff. Um, so I do that normally. 
with regards to the pandemic, I've been moved into back office sort of um, a slightly more management sort of ish role where I'm helping the um, staffing sickness line at the IUH. So I've been doing sort of 10, 12 hour shifts um, over the course of the pandemic just to try and sort of help that. And we arrange the swabs and things like that. So different to what I would normally do. Mm. Um, and then obviously, yeah, different again from what I do here. Which, you know, before we come on to Chris, that's the key thing that has happened, isn't it? Is it's 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 all hands to the pump in, in all of the roles during this lockdown. And you know, how have you found that in the fact of te- that's very different to what you would normally be doing then by the sounds of it? Yeah, very different. So um, because obviously the hospital reduced the amount of outpatient appointments that they were doing um, so that they could focus on different areas. Um, I was kind of moved into the back office and um, up into the staffing command and it's just been it's been strange because normally I just do a seven and a half hour day see patients um, and this is slightly different because I'm taking calls with regards to people's sickness um, making sure that we're giving them the right advice getting them swabbed for the coronavirus if need be um, and then also giving out results and stuff. So, yeah, it's been completely different and learning different skills within the role that I'd already been doing. So, yeah, it's been interesting. I, I, you know, and, and the, the, the credit has to go with the way you've summed that up. It's been interesting and everybody I know will be massively appreciative of all the work that you guys have been doing. Chris, what about yourself day to day then, mate? Uh, day to day, I work for NHS Taxis, or better known as the Ambulance Service. Um <laughs> I've been there, uh, well, July 4th actually was my nine-year nine, nine year anniversary. Um, for the past sort of seven years, seven and a half years, I've been frontline uh, emergency care assistant. Um, and 18 months ago, started my paramedic training, um, which finishes uh, end of September. Wow. Um, so I should be... We think we should be probably qualified probably January of next year. I'll be on the register, the right register, that is. Yeah, we all know about that, mate. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, does that mean during this, is it that you, unlike Emma, where it's been sort of, you know, as we hear from so many people, all hands to the pump and it's, it's to whatever's really been needed by you superheroes uh, in, in, the, in the health uh, environment, have you, is yours still been sort of the same job that you were doing, just busier? Yeah, um, when when it initially hit, jobs, our, our, our sort of jobs increased because we were getting more, we were getting the, the, the coronavirus stuff. Then that sort of tailed off, but now everything's sort of starting to get back to normal and we're starting to get, get busier and busier again, unfortunately. And the uh, interesting thing there then is that that means that your day-to-day job is more to do with the ambulance and yet that's what Emma does <laughs> more on the, uh, you know, manages. Where, where she, yeah. she, I suppose it isn't that different for you, Emma, because you manage someone who's, dro- you know, in the ambulances anyway, day-to-day in managing your husband. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. no different for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just whereas and, and then chris for example you're saying i mean you're running the uh, the you know the, the the med center and keeping it all, all all controlled apologies if i'm paraphrasing slightly wrong there but um you, you know that i i guess that that is because you've both gone right even though what i'm i'm allowed to say this is that what you guys do and and everyone else in your field does is amazing but you've decided to go even further uh, again and do additional things and different things when you're at the circuit not just do what you do for your day job yeah yeah wow so i i I started marshalling here i think it's about 33 years ago i was was quite young really Um, yeah i joined i was i started off in the paddock um because i think back then you could you could start a lot younger um at 18 i went onto the bank and was marshalling, but I, um, I sort of obviously knew the, the, the rescue crew from back then and um, wanted to get onto rescue. Um, joined St. John to get my first day c- certificate and everything. And then uh, after two years on the banks, you had to do two years back then. Um, 
we um I, I joined the rescue crew okay and then it just went on from there um i started looking after the uh the med center oh les oh oh we got the legend that is les and he said no to appearing on camera by the sounds of that we still had to make sure we let him know so that we hi les hi legend <laughs> <laughs> Hello, mate. I mean, what a show, Chris and Emma Mason, and then Les just in the middle there. Wow. How are you, my friend? I'm fine, thank you. You? Yeah, I'm good, thank you, mate. No swearing. You're live on Coom TV at no, the moment. I can't swear, mate. <laughs> <laughs> just we're we're sort of doing a mixture of things, and one of those, of course, is reviewing uh, Saturday, fourth of July. We got the racing underway, and. Uh, you know, I know you guys were very busy, busier than you wanted to be in the uh, qualifying session, but uh, um, it, it it went well. Everybody just really stepped up to the plate, didn't they? Yeah, very good, wasn't it? Very good. Yeah. Well, how was it? For, how did it feel for you to actually get uh, get it back underway? Was it was it a relief or was it oh crikey, now I've remembered how much work it is? Yeah, both really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good to see it, but it's strange to have no crowd there. That's a problem. It was, wasn't it? And 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 that's interesting to hear from your perspective as well. Is that it felt strange, but yeah, baby steps, isn't it, mate? That's right, mate. Yeah, it was. <laughs> no, well, uh, listen, well done. You're an absolute hero. Although we had a prime example of you turning around and saying that those four post replacements in the morning was going to take an hour. Uh, oh no, sorry, forty-five minutes. You said, and it wasn't. It was done within about half an hour. But you always put the little buffer in, don't you, to make sure. Yeah, you never know, do you? That's the problem with it, you know? Yeah. And you, if it looks really bad, you can do it in 20 minutes. And ones that looks not too bad, it takes 45 minutes or so. It wasn't a normal place, was it, for, uh, no, for a post replacement? Not <laughs> the first time, though. <laughs> oh, really? Is it not? Oh, we, we thought it uh, was. No, the catering one, they do the same sort of thing. Oh, uh, okay. Fair enough. We'll let them off then. We thought that that was a very unique one. But, uh, uh, you know, you, you and your team, I mean, I mean, I guess the other thing as well, Les, is that as well as working hard and getting back to it, is that you'd have been having to operate in very different circumstances because of the whole coronavirus. Yeah, it's a strange situation to be in, mate, to be honest. You know, toilet-wise and, well, everything, to be honest. Short-staffed as well. Short-staffed, yeah. Oh, were you? Yeah. Yeah, we only had two of us on the on the track on Saturday. Wowzers, really? Yeah, only two. That's incredible. And that's, uh, and that presumably, that's you and your lad, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. Although I can't, I feel wrong calling him your lad, because I think he's the same age as me, but we know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, Les, on behalf of everyone, and uh, and I know that I'm just looking at it now, is that we are, we're, we're seeing it, is that uh, Tim Perry suddenly going, legend, Les, hey, uh, Russell Pointer Brown, oi, oi, Les, uh, <laughs> Becky Hill, Les, Chris Hignall coming up, going, evening, Les, great job by you and your team on Saturday, thank you, uh, which, you know, I knew would be coming up somewhere as well. Dave Rogers, great, great wise, Les. Dave Rogers been drinking again. Yeah, same <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but thank you very much for calling in. We weren't sure whether you would uh, would give us. Uh, a work, mate. <laughs> yeah, was it you're out mowing the grass? Is that right? Yeah, we've got to start doing repairs on the pit lane tomorrow. Oh really? Yeah. No, no rest for the wicked. You've clearly been no, wicked, mate. mate. <laughs> okay, thanks for that, Chris. No worries, mate. You take it steady, and we'll see you on the first. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks, matey. You take Thank it steady. <laughs> well, there we go. It is all the legends we're getting on here. Uh, Paul Wiltshire, hi, Les, looking handsome. Um, uh, Roly Hamblin says that's got to be the longest I've known Les not to swear. I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Even he probably agrees with that as well. Uh, oh, that's a bit cheeky, is that uh, Dave Spiller's dad, that's all I'm going to call you from now on, Pete, uh, Les's lad, same age as Dorvesy, 58 then. Uh, no, <laughs> mate, there's no need for that, all right? I, I'm in my 40s, so don't give me that. <laughs> um, yes, sorry, uh, Chris, where were we? Where were we? Um, is that we were going, oh, the current Mrs. Dawes, I've still got lots left, my love. Thank You'll you never very turn much. It down, though. <laughs> Oh, current Mr. Dawes has double parked me all of a sudden. Yeah. Thanks. 
Balancing the force. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> she's just been out to get her first haircut, so she's very happy now. I don't have that problem, do we, Chris? No, no. In fact, I'm starting to need a haircut. I'm starting to turn into a hippie. <laughs> yeah, it's out of control, mate. It's out of yeah. control. <laughs> uh, just quickly saying, Matt uh, Coyle, who, of course, is the saloon car uh, coordinator. Well done, Coombe family and all teams and drivers. Hats off. The work that went into Saturday was amazing. All day, the buzz around the paddock was everyone felt safe and got down to some great racing. That's important to hear, Chris, isn't it? Because I'm sure yeah. you're the same as me, is that we were so busy during the day that we were kind of a little bit divorced from it. But to yeah. hear that is exactly what we want to hear. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's great. I mean, I I, I managed to watch, I think, one or two race starts. Um, and um, But then it's sort of back down here, sort of keeping an eye on things and um, just making sure everything's running smoothly. I mean, just so that, I mean, some people will know if they watch the uh, sort of like uh, the build up and the, the, the description of what was going to have to happen for everybody is that your your med center kind of expanded somewhat. But that wasn't the luxury that you would think that to be. It, it, it will have had to have provided its own challenges, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it did. So um, typically on a race day, there's between 20 and 30 of us. Um, there's no way we could cram that many people into um, the med centre and sort of have any resemblance of social distancing. Um, and also we had to make it a bit safer for, or, or put some social distancing in for the patients as well. Mm. So unfortunately we, we had to take over the media centre. We turned that into a triage and minor injuries unit. Um, so that had to be deep cleaned um, and ready um, to have everything sort of done. So, and that that we couldn't really get into. Uh, it got deep cleaned the, uh, a couple of nights before. Sorry. And then um, we moved all the equipment in there literally Saturday morning. Um, we also took over driver signing on basically the whole of the bottom end of the of the. Um, control tower so we took the k thomas center which yeah. we used for, for the um, staff to put their bits and pieces it was somewhere dry where we and big enough where we could have our um our team briefing so every race day at eight o'clock um we have a, a, a medical team briefing and nine times out of ten it's the same thing same format we always do introductions and things like that and then we sort of um, have to sort of we go through um what's going to happen throughout the day obviously it was a bit more interesting saturday because um of all the corona things that we had to put in place no i mean uh, including is that we saw it multiple times during the day is that if anybody uh had to come back in 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 the ambulance and we we, we did have um I don't know what less than a handful of those I think from memory that we had to do but of course that's not as bad as it sounds that is that literally is that if they've come to a sudden stop they're brought back in it anyway to to the to one of the med center facilities we had set up um but what that then meant is that there was a big delay before we could get the action back underway again wasn't there because you actually had to deep clean all yeah. of the medical vehicles again didn't you before we could get going yeah yeah so um we <laughs> We got it down quite quite quickly, actually. We um, we turned into a Formula One pit crew, to be fair. Um, <laughs> so the lads in the back were uh, already wiping down. As soon as the patient um, is taken out, they start wiping down, and we have run out with mop and bucket, mop from front to back, um, and then off they go again. Wow! Um, we we're really lucky that the, the the club gave us sort of allowed extra time in between um the races um for us to be able to do that um and that was the thing. it needed to be a, a well-oiled machine didn't it it had to be yeah 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 um I'm just which is where the, the teamwork actually came in you know and, and and I know that you are massive advocates of this as it is about the wider team, is that you guys all had to work together absolutely, you know, on point throughout yeah. the whole day. Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of the team. The, the, um, and, and we are a team, um, whether you rescued uh, doctor, you know, 
our roles or the ambulance crew, we do work as a, as a, as a big team. And we actually had a new ambulance contractor, Enhanced Care Services. Yeah. Um, and their first time here, um, they loved it. They, they were on their Twitter feed with it. Um, they, and really went really, really well. Um, obviously, we had outdoor medical services, our other crews here. Um, and yeah, it just everyone just gels. It's, it's really good. I mean, talk about start with a bang. I mean, that is uh, is, is fair play. You, you you can't knock that at all, can you? That is amazing. Um, just quickly, I'm going to go back because there was a comment that came up uh, a little while ago. Uh, <laughs> David Rose has been a bit rude. He says, you've been marshalling longer than he's been alive. I'll, yeah. hold him, I'll hold him, you hit him, all right? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's only about 12. That's true, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though he's a past champion, of course, but... Uh, uh, it's great to see that. Uh, George Hadley just saying, great short do- uh, shirt doors. You don't forget, of course, not only have we got this bit, on the back, of course, it says, let Coombe TV be gin. I just love that play on words. I felt really proud of myself with that one. Um, but because, uh, of course, it's kind of been whispered that I drink a reasonable amount of gin. <laughs> um uh, exactly right. And if you are uh, interested, therefore, uh, George, is that there you go, www.tshirtstudio.com forward slash marketplace forward slash coom TV. Or you go to my Chris Dawes Media uh, Facebook page and you'll see them there as well. Please go get them. There's t shirts, there's uh, mugs, there's trackside water bottles. That was funny, Chris. I can't remember whether I've said this already. Chris and Emma, you'll find this amusing because you know that I've been drinking my gin, is that because I put it up with me posting it and everything else that's gone on, I called it drinks bottle. And it would not allow me to post it because he said nothing about alcohol is allowed to go up. But as soon as I changed it to water bottle, it allowed it to go up. It's almost as if the reputation went before me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they knew. I just went trackside drinks bottle. I meant it completely innocent, but uh, hey, that's uh, that's a shame. Uh, just quickly, is that Grant Higgs has also said, is Forge performance cancelled? Not as far as I'm aware. 5th of September is the date that I've got for that because we're, uh, you know, I get asked to sort of host those things on the mic. I can't remember whether I said I was available or not because, of course, I'm here, there and everywhere. But as far as I'm aware, Grant, that one's still going. Everything is watch this space, as I know you guys will be sat there knowing full well that everything, you know, like the the action days, we know that there's almost a victim of its own success, that it's so busy, isn't it, with so many people, which I'd imagine scares the bejesus out of you guys. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. The, um, I mean, we've just heard that they're opening up um, outdoor theatres and things like that. Yeah. Um, swimming pools, gyms are opening, so um, they're going to allow more people to come in. To think it does make us it makes me a bit nervous, but we deal with it as we go on. You know, whatever they throw at us, will and we kind of have to to some extent, don't we? But it's a very, very scary. And, and I'm saying that you know, and I'm not trying to trip you up, and, and and you did well in sort of controlling what you you were saying there um clearly and i think that's the best way to go none of us know including you guys in fairness medical experts none of us are set there knowing exactly what the story is we're we're just kind of praying for the best and planning for the worst no that's it and at some point we've got to get back to some form of of normality and actually have to cope with covid um and and you know it will just become another um It'll be like winter flu, but there'll be more precautions around it and more, you know, uh, sort of more isolation for people that get it. Bring on the geniuses with the vaccine. That's what we we, we really need to sort of give us some kind of protection. That'll make us feel happier. Um, Even if it's uh, placebo, who knows? But uh, Paul Wiltshire says, I started 35 years ago at Coombe and can remember a very fresh face, Chris, from then. Still a Emma, don't you think he's still a fresh face? Come on, I'm, I'm... prompting you get brownie no sorry sorry all right i tried to get he has a company haircut because the gray is just everywhere (laughs) it's just wrong i tried chris i tried mate (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, right now, let's go back down to where we were because I was jumping around when Les came in. He threw my uh, my feed all out. No, it was Les's fault. He just threw my stream everywhere because everyone went, "Hey, Les!" <laughs> As we would expect. Um, Pippa Gore, uh, sorry, no. Uh, Chloe Creed says, "Well done to the medical team at Coombe from a fellow medic at Santa Pod." Ah, hello, Santa Pod. So they'll know uh, how difficult it is for everybody. I like this one as well, actually, is that Lee White, who we know from uh, formerly of the Green uh, the Green Army, was uh, was because of Les that I got into Castle Coombe. And therefore, Nick Workman says, Lee White, where there's blame, you can claim. <laughs> <laughs> Go and claim off Les. <laughs> Uh, interesting question. Uh, Mike Cotton asked the question, was the med centre busier than normal or otherwise? No, in, in actual fact, um, a lot quieter. Uh, we, saw eight, yeah, we saw eight people through the door and um, they were all driver checks. Yeah, so all the concussion checks. All the concussion checks. Um, typically, we can have anything up to 30 of those on a normal race day really yeah. yeah yeah so we changed how because of because of the um the way concussion is being looked at now and is a lot more under the microscope than it ever was um we introduced some policies it might not be as friendly to the drivers as they'd like um but it's sort of a bit of protection for everyone yeah um so if they make contact with anything out on circuit um or even in here in the in the in the paddock then we ask them to come in to do concussion tests um and make sure they're fit to to go back out um the touring cars did an, a, an interesting piece on concussion and they found that in some of the lower, the, some of the lower formulas that they had, so the Clio's and things like that, um, drivers were having impacts with uh, the barriers and things like that. They were unconscious for 10 to 15 seconds. Um, so by the time the marshals got to them, they were back fully awake. Right. And, and no one could realise that they'd had this period of unconsciousness them as well potentially or that either they would have been unaware or they'd have certainly hid it of course is the other thing we know what the drivers are like yeah. well uh, they do they will just want to race don't they and that's the thing that's i mean there lies yeah. another point is that i know that uh dr sue smith is is a big uh, champion of this and it's something that's resonated with me since the start is that we need the joined up thinking across the whole country for the medical side of things is that um, uh, without giving anyone ideas, but it is uh, sadly, it's, the, it's, it's a fact is that you could get concussion at Silverstone on the Saturday and then come and race at Castle Coombe on the Monday and no one would be any the wiser that you'd got it. And it needs a joined up, uh, uh, yeah. you know, system of some description. This, this is what's being looked at now. And we're working closely with Rescue Racer, um, Dr. Naomi Deacon, who did this, uh, the most sport study on concussion. Um, she actually came down last year, I believe it was last year, yeah, either beginning of this year or end of last year, we, we had a, a, uh, she did a, a presentation for us. So we're now working with them um, and we can actually, if we have a driver that is, has got a concussion, we diagnose as having a concussion, if they want to, we can refer them to Rescue Racer and there's additional support for them, they can go off and do Oh, further good. tests um, and actually potentially get them back into racing slightly quicker. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those ones is that I know that there's this sort of like theory at times is that um, we either live in a more... Um, people call it a litigious society, I call it American society, um, or there is the snowflake society, you know, let's, let's, be, let's see how many times I could be politically incorrect within a matter of <laughs> seconds, eh? Um, but, uh, uh, you know, there is that sort of like uh, feeling about it, but in actual fact, and, and I'm going to defend this massively, is that the concussion is neither of those, it is actually uh, education over the years of, of a hidden menace that wasn't yeah. fully understood has now become better understood um, yeah. and therefore it needs to be stamped on. I mean, you look at the American footballers over in the States at the moment, 
is that they're suddenly realizing that there are people suddenly uh, retiring into vegetative states and, and, and what have you because they were just taking these hits and nobody knew that the brain would react that way. So it is about making sure that if anybody, even if it's the slightest hit, you go, you get checked. A lot of the time it is fine, no problem. Yeah. But you need to be checked for your sake, for insurance's sake, for everything really. And it's also the safety of others. So if you have a concussion on the circuit or something and then you are driving home and then something occurs, yeah. we need to make sure that you know you're safe to do that as a driver, as even a member of staff, if you bang your head here or you've hurt your head on the way in. And you that's know, a good point. I, and and of course is that the the, um, the 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 circuit and the motorsport UK sort of cover for that day is from midnight to midnight as well. So even the drive home, all of that sort of stuff, they need to make sure that they're okay. And it is you you've got to check. So and and I'm the only reason I brought this up a little bit more, and and I don't understand it fully, but I've under I've sort of like listened and bought into it enough is that I know that we get drivers going for goodness sake, you know, I just sort of like went off lightly and and it was nothing much. Well, great, then you got in, you got checked, you got ticked. It's not a problem. It has to become that new norm that people just kind of go, let's go and make sure you, you're in safe hands. That if it happens to be too bad, the good news is you've caught it before it becomes an issue. Yeah. We, we've taken a, a bit of lead from um, the ACU, actually, and from North Gloucester, um, the Motorcycle Club. Um, if they have a rider fall off in the assembly area waiting to go out, they have to come back to see us before they can go out. Right. Um, they, have a check, they have a card that they have to bring us, and they're, they're, they're rechecked. Uh, re yeah, we check them. And then they're allowed to, you know, if we pass and they can go out and go racing. Wow. So we've sort of taken a little bit from that, a bit from the Motorsport UK, um, sort of come up with what we're doing. Um, and it, I think it works. Um, the only person that it's, it creates more work for, effectively, a little bit more work for the doctors because they have to do something. And more work for me because I've got more medical statistics to go through and process. Um, but it's, we'd rather it that way. Yeah, exactly. And I knew you would say that is that we, we most definitely would. I mean, I, I think another part of it comes from a lot of people won't necessarily know this is that in what should have been my final year of A-levels, um, I, uh, I was actually in the doctor's been looking into some, uh, a back issue and I was waiting for, to have a blood test and typical male is that I don't like needles. And I had that light headed feel that normally wouldn't be too much of an issue, but what, turned out is i had severe bruising of my brain at that point and i had no idea to this day don't really know where it came from um you know high teens age or whatever i'd have been at the time you hit your head you get on with it which is exactly like yeah. these drivers you don't appreciate it um but where that lightheadedness came i went and i was then rushed to hospital and i was um uh, basically out of it for something like four days um and then semi with it again the problem is, is that the brain scan just shows a shadow. And so I actually spent the next, I think it was six months or whatever it was, with a suspected brain tumor. But thankfully, the shadow got smaller, which, of course, tumors don't do. So it transpired it was bruising. And it destroyed that fine year of my A-levels. And I still, to this day, remember that I argued, no, I can still, I feel fine, I feel fine, I can go and do it. And I sat in um, uh, an A-level class, and I was told it was in the concentration part of my brain, which to everybody else, you kind of go, what? That sounds ridiculous. And I actually sat there and uh, it's Minnie Mason. <laughs> Minnie Mason. Yeah. I sat there and, and thought for a second when they set us to sort of like think about something. <coughs> it was like I'd been struck by lightning. Literally, I can see the only way I can describe it, struck by lightning. And I ran out of the room as a high teenager. So what would I have been, 17, 18, 19, whatever it was, I can't remember. I ran out of the room, like virtually in tears, which you don't do as a, as a, as a lad of that age. But literally, that's how bad it was. And I had to accept that that year was written off. Thankfully, it wasn't tumor. It got smaller. Um, I had uh, behavior issues for that year uh, where it was really weird. And thankfully, it all got resolved. I got to university just a year later and everything carried on. But the reason why I'm bringing that story up is that I, I probably have got an experience myself about how it affects you more than you would ever give it credit. Yeah. Yeah. 
and that's the thing it can affect your memory it can just be the slightest change in your memory yep. in your speech um lots of different things and it's not doesn't have to be a specific it can be a wide range of symptoms that you get yeah. even to degree of anxiety and things like that oh, we're half losing you at the minute guys we're back. Yeah. Oh, hang on, we're losing them. Uh, I'd imagine that's all of us. We've suddenly had uh, someone else has jumped onto the Wi Fi. Mini Mason's watching Netflix, probably. <laughs> we'll just wait, give them a minute. Hopefully, they'll come back again in a second. That's frozen dramatically on them, hasn't it, at the moment? Um, Great to see that the uh, the comments are still coming in while uh, while those guys are uh, uh, just oh let's just we had a brief move but bizarrely we've gone from it working really really well so they disappeared for a second I'm going to therefore just go through a few more of these comments and then we'll pick that back up in a second um, Pippa Gore I said uh, Pippa Gore a minute ago it's because I was going to say what she said yes hats off to the medical peeps it was awesome to watch the deep clean process as she was in assembly and she got to witness it firsthand so uh, that was uh, uh, definitely good to see I think we've got uh, uh, the Masons coming back in again in a second so hopefully that will work uh, let's keep going Elliot Harris yes I'm uh, Harris sorry yes I'm great thank you very much um also, as well, picking up uh, on the uh, the question about the action days, Tim Perry says, check the Castle Coombe Facebook page. I think it's being updated regularly. Let's let's bring these guys back in again. Are you back with us? No, how bizarre. Someone suddenly tapped in on the Wi-Fi, Chris. Go and have a word with them because uh, it's, uh, it's suddenly blocked your connection, which is a real shame. Uh, going back to when we're talking about the vaccine, I love the fact that Paul Wiltshire suggested a gin-based vaccine, Dorsey. I agree. That's got to work. It's got to be, uh, be, be great. <laughs> Jackie Faye's come up with, there has to be a market for Dorsey's Ruin, gin-flavoured hand sanitizer. I like that one. That's a, that's a, a, a really good idea. Oh, that's a lot of comments coming in. Um, Tim Perry's made a good comment from the Orange Army. One thing he would like to say is that considering this was the driver's first race for months, they were rather well behaved and did pretty uh, much follow requests and guidelines asked of them. So congratulations there from uh, one of the, uh, the armies. I can kind of hear them coming in in the background, um, but it's not working particularly brilliant at the minute. I'm just going to quick. Right, let's bring them back in again. Hello. I can hear. Oh, oh, that's better, uh, sir. That's better. I don't know what happened there. Someone suddenly nicked your bandwidth, didn't they? Yeah, well, I'm. Yeah, I'm not using the Wi-Fi now. Oh, okay. So I've gone to using uh, my data because I've got unlimited data. So. Um, okay. Well, thank um, you for that, mate. Thank better. you. There we go. We got there in the end. Sorry about that, everybody, but thank you for your patience. It's, again, it's what I say. It's the joys of technology. Um, sorry, we were just sort of chatting about the uh, the, the head side of thing is that, uh, I mean, Emma, you mentioned about the fact that it can affect, uh, you know, even things like memory is that anybody who sees my commentary box knows that I've got notes and paperwork coming out of my eyeballs. And it's because as a result of that, I've had to accept that my memory isn't necessarily there to be relied on i wouldn't say i've got an issue necessarily but there are you know times when i kind of go i just cannot for the life remember what i was trying to say or or whatever so i over prepare it's part of my open doors training i even say over prepare so that you've got your crutch there if you need it but you know if if people are suddenly forgetting what they've got to do you know 
they need to go and get checked for 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 the potential of head injuries that will be more than they they might realize yeah and that's the thing i think it's just being aware of yourself basically and what is normal for you and if there's a change in that normal for you uh, it, absolutely which i guess has got to be difficult for you guys because you don't necessarily know the them <laughs> exactly no, no. Um, some sports, what you'll find is that they do baselines at the beginning of each season. Uh, okay. um, so things like um, football, rugby, horse racing, um, they all have baseline um, things done initially. And then what they're done is they assess them against that score. So whatever they scored, if they score lower Mommy. or higher, then Mommy. there's tends to be an issue. Yeah. <laughs> It, it's something that I I would like to look at for us here, maybe for our own our, our own championships, those Formula Fords, hot hatches, and things like that. That um, oh, we'd like I'd, I'd like to have the time to be able to go through them, do a baseline right. score on yeah. them, and then we we've got something to refer back back to. So um, if any drivers out of our championships are interested. Um, if they want to drop us a line, um, if we get some, get a list of names. So I, I can go forward to Sue and say, look, these are a list of drivers that are interested in doing baseline. Uh, and I do. I recommend it massively strongly. You know, you get it sorted when uh, before it's too late because then people can can manage it. Incidentally, by the way, I brought up the fact that Tim Perry said about the fact that we're you know, complimenting the drivers, that they were very well behaved, followed the requests and guidelines asked of them. And in fact, Mike Cotton then has said that was behind his question about saying, were you busier than normal or otherwise? And, and I think that's a, you know, I, I'm going to say it because I know Dr. Sue Atwoodley said she was quite nervous that for the first time uncaged for so long is it was going to be bad. But we've got to take our hats off to the drivers. They, they, they did yeah. really well, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They, they were very well behaved. I think some of them um, got a bit um, carried away on the, testing day yes uh, there was a few off on the testing day uh, i should say a little exuberant but um no the, on race day they were very very well behaved considering some of the conditions um i think we were lucky yeah. considering the conditions that we had i think we were really lucky to be fair. i do i'd agree weren't you the same as me going off oh, for goodness sake what did we do to deserve that the weather yeah, yeah. It was, but it was always going to happen, though, wouldn't it? It was always going to be three raining. months of sunshine. Put a race meeting on, and it rains. Absolutely. Although, do you know what the irony is? From where I, I have the uh, the privilege of commentating all over the country, pretty much every weekend. Do you know the worst? And you you guys probably actually know this. To be fair, the worst days are when it is really hot. Yeah. They, they just seem to go nuts. They go out. And, and I, I still to this day remember um, at Franz Hatch where we're on the full GP circuit and we just had mayhem all day, whereas if they just literally sort of, the, the, the heat made them disengage brain kind of thing, and it was just mayhem. So sometimes, in fact, when I host the racing school, the Castle Coombe Racing School, is that uh, if it's wet and people have kind of gone, oh, typical, you know, I've been waiting for, for a year for this or whatever, I actually turn and say, it is best that it's wet because you actually pay more attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. It's also cooler. Exactly, exactly right. Although I think we had uh, misting up issues as well, uh, which is interesting. Uh, good one, this one. Nick Workman says, trivia fact alert. Myself and a certain Les Rawlings were recruited as rescue trainee crew way back in the early 1980s. He's gone on to greater things and I'm still stuck in the rescue unit. Where did I go wrong? Wow. I think Nick means the 1880s, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> Very, I'm glad you said that, not me, mate. That's fine. You can get yourself in trouble. <laughs> um, right. Uh, oh, this is nice. Ah. Huh. The old man. Oh, yeah. Christopher Mason. Hi, son. Nice to see you on TV. Is he a Christopher or is he a Chris? Uh, Dad is a Chris. I'm supposed to be the Christopher. Are you? I'm supposed yeah. to be Christopher, but only when I'm in trouble. Yeah, that's yeah. the same here. Yeah. So so officially, you're Chris Mason the second. That's it, yeah. That's it now, mate. That's sticking. Well, 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 well technically, technically, I'm Chris Mason the first because my dad changed his name by Depol. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, before I was born. 
but um, yeah. So how, he stole how, my name, really. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That's intriguing. Um, oh, this is interesting. The next comment that came up after that was from Nick Workman again. Another trivia fact alert. Chris Mason's dad, Chris Mason Sr., was a member of the rescue queue crew with me way, way, way back in the past. 1880s, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, Doug wasn't on the rescue crew. He was on the bank, though. He was um, uh, a marshal here. Uh, he was post chief right? at one point, yeah. I mean, you guys kind of, um, you know, you, you, you sum up why Coombe TV, frankly, was, was, was sort of born during this lockdown is that I've called it all the time, hashtag family Coombe. You know, it really is, you know, listening to uh, exactly. And we've got the next generation already there. And, uh, you know, it really, really is, is that we've got your dad, which is just lovely to see sort of get involved that had been a marshal here. You've been, I didn't realize, Chris, that you'd been a marshal for, for what did you say it was 35 oh, years? 30 odd years yeah wow amazing yeah. D- from that emma do i guess that you kind of got dragged into it by him um <laughs> yeah. um i've actually been coming up here for quite a while as well but in from a st john perspective oh wow like, okay i um started in st john back in when i was about eight so in 1988 ish um and i was was St John for about 30 years um and I started coming up here with my mum and dad um so they'd be the ambulance crew and I'd come up with them and sort of be in the med centre or go down to quarry first aid post when St John were heavily involved up here yeah um so I've known of Chris for a long time um and then yeah so my mum and dad were up here with us um unfortunately we don't have my mum and dad anymore. Um, my dad passed away quite young and so did my mum. Um, but I kept on with St John and kept coming up. And then me and Chris got together. Um, don't know how. <laughs> kind of um, and I was then, drunk. Yeah. I'm not sure. And then, yeah, it's kind of gone from there. And my involvement with the medical centre and the rescue crew was kind of developed from there. So, yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, uh, which kind of backs up my point even more, doesn't it? That, you know, what a tight knit community Castle Coombe Circuit is, yeah. which is, is why we also went about putting the live feed on, uh, you know, as, you know, whatever level we were able to do is that we knew that the spectators that couldn't come that are always there in their droves would want to see something. It's why they're desperate to come back again. And let's be honest, guys, is that we're desperate to come back because it is, it's that Les said it himself. It felt weird, even from his perspective, yeah. that we weren't all back together again. Yeah. Yeah. It's strange looking up at the banks and not seeing anyone on there at all. It's, 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 it's with, with something on, you know, with racing on, it's, it's very, very strange. Even watching um, Formula One from the other day and that just, Oof. It was very bizarre, yeah. very bizarre to see um, uh, no crowds. Um, it, it, and, and I don't know if anybody's tried to watch any of the football at the moment. And if you can turn off the, the TV feed, has a crowd uh, noise and ambience and everything. And I actually turned that off. I do not know how those footballers are doing that at the moment. It just literally is like training ground. It's horrific. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I watched sort of ten minutes of a game, and it had the the cheer and the, the ambient noise in the background, and it yeah. just it just felt weird mm. having that noise and but not seeing anyone. Correct. Well, I don't know if you've done it, Chris, but I I encourage you to then do the the feed where it has none of it, and it is so weird because there's no noise apart from them shouting, echoing around the stadium. It's just really weird. So credit where it's due. Uh, I love this comment as well. Is that uh, going back to what we were saying earlier? Craig Shield says, "Ask a driver after a crash, are they okay? You can guarantee they'll say, yeah, 'Yeah, I'm fine.' Yeah. And that's the problem you're faced with, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Then. You get it all the time, and you know, because the adrenaline's pumping. They've just gone from a hundred plus miles an hour to to zero quite quickly. It's going to take some time for the adrenaline to come down, and also potentially at the hands of somebody else. Yeah, they've gone from hundred to zero. So, so yeah, they're always going to say, you know, oh, um, I'm okay. I got um, Diddy Dawes in as well as Minnie Mason. Diddy Dawes, there. Diddy Dawes Dawes well. <laughs> You're off to bed, are you? 
Night, night. Love you. <laughs> Sorry, guys. She wanted to come in and say hi to you as well. <laughs> no, I mean adrenaline is uh, is is your wor- is your best friend and your worst enemy all rolled into one. And uh, you yeah. know, I, I again, I still even to a. I say a lesser extent, it's all relative, isn't it? Is that I still have that with regards to my, um, uh, you know, my, my public speaking training is to make people understand that adrenaline is, is also what you get when you're nervous. And it's also what you get when you're excited. It's what you get when you're under pressure. It's, and so actually, instead of just automatically assuming the worst, turn it into a positive. However, you guys have to kind of go the opposite direction and go, no, 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 stop. Your adrenaline's making you convinced you can go and take on the world. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's the fight, fight or flight, and uh, exactly. you've just got to sort of try and get them calm, get them away, get them somewhere calm. And that's the other reason why we bring them back to the medical centre for assessment because it's that time lag that we've got for yes. things to wear off that we can actually get a true assessment of how they are. And, and, and I guess you guys and, and many of you watching will probably realize that you're potentially guilty of this one, I'm sure, if you're drivers, is that um, I get the impression, and I don't know whether it's overtly or just uh, in, inside, is that you, you're the um, sort of the victims of them frustrated that they've got to go and do all of this. It can, yeah, it can happen. They can sort of, you know. I will say our drivers... So our championship drivers are a lot better because obviously they know what we do. They're used to it. It's sometimes when we get drivers from external um, championships that we kind of struggle because it's like, oh, it's not done like that at another race circuit. Why have I got to do this? They don't do that at Silverstone. They don't do this at Grand Hatch. Why am I doing this? It's not like, you know, and I think sometimes it's, uh, getting those drivers and those championships to appreciate that at the moment each circuit is different, slightly different, and they do have different rules. And it's just you need to, they need to sort of accept that you know we are a bit different, maybe to some circuits, but actually it's for their benefit. It, uh, well, and 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 I think that's why I've deliberately brought this one up now is just to make sure that if there's anybody out there that kind of thinks you know, oh, this isn't necessary. It really is, and this is why. So I just hope that it's useful uh, to, to a few yeah. of you out there as well. Um, let's just make sure. Let's check to see. Uh, I love that as well. Deborah Bullis saying, Hi. Minnie Mason is watching Fireman Sam training to join the rescue team. <laughs> That's my sister. Oh, is it? That's Auntie Debbie, yeah. Hello, Auntie Debbie. Uh Oh, and I've got that you're going to log out and come back in again. Apparently, I've only just seen that one now. Yes. <laughs> and and uh, Chloe uh, from Santa Pod has made the point saying head injuries are rubbish. They can take a while to show signs. And that and again, I'm yeah. speaking from experience now with that horrible experience, uh, you know, all those years ago is that absolutely it, it, you need that time, which I guess is another reason why you don't sort of rush them necessarily into there because you need to have that time. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it's it's why we give them that time, and they're given time to sort of calm down a bit and things like that. We, you know, we also we won't tend to release a driver. Um, um, we have certain parameters um, where we won't release them until their heart rate is under X or you know their blood pressure has come down to this. You know, um, it's also. We also look at the mechanism of how the actual contacts occurred. Uh, so if it's been a high speed, if it's into the barrier, if it's just contact side to side or if it's front to back, those sorts of things. It just depends on the direction as well. So it's the, the doctor will take into account all those considerations and put it all together to make the bigger picture. And I guess that you guys must be two major things that I've seen have made a, a huge difference that you guys must love even more is uh first of all the hands device um that i know is a neck thing but that can impact obviously uh a concussion and the like as well uh and the rector cell barriers and yes before anyone mocks i did remember the name of the rector cell barriers first time i seem to be terrible I talk about memory i seem to be terrible with that one but the rector cell i mean those both of those two things have made a massive difference haven't they yeah yeah the rector cell definitely it's it, it's um 
reduced a lot of the uh, certainly a lot of the damage to vehicles um, yeah. and um, also the, a lot of the injuries and things like that it sort of you know has reduced them I mean as I said we, we, we are seeing more patients than we all ever used to but that's just because we're seeing seeing the contacts yeah um, and, and and instantly it's not just contacts um, the other thing we do look at is if a car has had quite a violent spin, yeah, so if they've had oh, really? quite, a, quite a lot of rotations, yeah, we also want to see those as well because it's just the, the mechanism of them whipping round. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, so I mean, they've got a big, heavy, there. big, heavy unit on their head and then they're suddenly doing all of that. It's not good. That's not, that's right, yeah. Mm. Um, so... <sighs> The hands device is pretty good because obviously it's it's saving a lot of neck injuries, um, but what it can't do obviously is stop the brain movement because the brain sat in fluid. But that, hasn't it improved it? Because of course, instead of someone's head going wallop wallop, they're kind yeah, of yeah. But it, it doesn't stop the brain moving inside. Yeah, true. The skull. Okay. Yeah. It hasn't got quite so much movement, which is good. Um, so it has helped a little, but it, it doesn't stop it entirely because um, that was the thing is ironically with with the head injury that i had that i was talking about where i first keeled over and i went down and i hit straight onto the back of my head and so i had a little bit of bruise in there and then bizarrely where it went forward i had two sort of like eye socket shaped bruises on the front as well and they thought that was it but they were like just superficial they weren't the issue it was this weird one on the side that we have no idea where it came from but my point being is that it was like literally from just falling all right i'm six foot three so it's a reasonable height to go but even yeah. so i've just gone straight from a stand down hit the back of my head and then it still caused the bruising on the front as well so it gives you an idea of, of what can happen yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. coup and contra coup so it just shakes and you're in, getting in the, technical yeah. on me now aren't you yeah, I yeah. am. Yeah. <laughs> Even Emma looked at you and went, shut up. <laughs> she does that a lot, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. I spotted it. I spotted it. Um, uh, slight change of subject here is that Chris Pearson says, elephant in the room, any updates on attendance for the 1st of August? Not yet. Um, even I'm sat here with optimism. We've found that there has been a certain group that have used a loophole of calling them day visitors instead of spectators. Yeah. Who knows? Let's see. I'm going to actually have day visitors uh, listening to me this weekend at Snetterton. We've got to wait and see. I mean, it is looking after everyone. Plus, there's the expense of putting all the things everywhere around the current, uh, uh, the circuit. Sorry for hand sanitizing the, the the lavatory facilities. You think about the amount of people that are sort of holding on to the barriers at the front, and then you move away, and someone else goes on. You know, you you know, you we've got to make sure everything is right. But fingers crossed. Let's wait and see. But the answer's not yet, mate. We don't know just yet. We are hoping. Uh, good funny comment from uh, Becky Hill. Les has turned the Wi-Fi off. That was what happened early. <laughs> He's put another 50k in the meter. Yeah, exactly. Uh, many people. Yeah, uh, Lynn Hoy, Tim Perry, all saying hello to Minnie Mason. So that was lovely. Um, good. I, I always love it. Mike comes up with some great questions during the course of our chats. Taking the day as a whole, what lessons were learned and what would you change? And feel free not to tell us everything. I get that. But is there anything that you feel you can share? I think, actually, from my point of view, I think having the triage, so having the media centre as our sort of triage and minor injuries worked really well for us. Um, so actually having a bit more room in here, we could do with a another room at some point if somebody fancies building us another room um i think that really helped and was really beneficial um things we wouldn't do again i'd, I'd rather goes. not be doing any of it to be fair <laughs> <laughs> i just wish it was back to normal and it'd be great but i think we've as a team we've worked really well we've got the stuff really out well. there we've had gazebo shelters um, out on the track so that they were able to social distance. Yeah. Um, so some people may have seen, like some of the marshals may have seen them sort of additional sort of um, temporary gazebos. And also in the pit lane, there was a big red one. 
so that the med car could get out and if they needed to so yeah you know i think there's things that we're taking we'd love to take forward and have as a more permanent solution so like the shelters for the medical team and the rescue units um but obviously that's out of our hands from a yeah. perspective here so and and i think there's a lot of that isn't there there's there's some things that we're being forced changes that that we're kind of going oh yeah I mean, even down to a very basic, and I don't know whether this one affected you guys or not, is, uh, um, say, race control and all that, is that there's too much uh, freedom to just be sort of going paper heavy. And there, and where we can't do, we literally cannot, is paper lust. We've gone from one extreme to the other, which is not yeah. great. I Don't get me wrong, is that I really do need a grid because I make lots of notes on there when I'm ready to commentate. And I didn't have anything, and it was really, really hard. But you know there is paperwork everywhere being duplicated you know a hundred times over and that's one thing i don't know whether you guys would have had any impact on that front um we had so all our med stats and everything kind of went um via email um normally we'd be printing off two copies um and sending them up to the stewards and stuff so actually that made our life a little bit easier because we didn't need to print it off no rush at the yeah. end of the day um but other than that we are still with our patient report forms we'd love to be paperless with them and actually have them tab formulated so on a tablet and we can fill in sort of and get them sent into our sort of database and stuff yeah so you know those sorts of things would be really good for us but at the moment yeah down here we're still sort of quite paper heavy no i mean that's why i wasn't sure but i mean it is an example where things things are shaking uh, and not everything for a negative um picking up on the comment you made earlier chloe from uh, santa pod said fab idea on the basic obs and baseline so you know what is their normal so there you go they they've agreed and they think that's a good idea uh, I quite like that. <laughs> Here's a great one, and it is someone that was uh, was in my uh, mind as an example. Bob Higgins had a, a, an incident up at Quarry Corner in the second race of Formula Ford, and of course he had to go in. and And I chatted to him after. He said, "I don't get it. You know, I, I was fine. I was fine." And I was like, "Bob, it's the norm, mate. It goes to." If anything, I said to him, "I said it shows how long it's been since you've had an accident, which is good news, yeah. mate. That's good." Um, but I love his comment there. He says, I'm not normal at the best of times. So actually, he was probably no different to his baseline anyway. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's very That's true, mate. Part. That's very true. Yeah, we do, exactly. Um, just quickly check in on a couple of other bits and pieces because the difficulty is, is that uh, I have to read through the, the comments because uh, some of them are, are replying to each other and uh, doesn't necessarily... Uh, respond to anything. Oh, there we go. Is that even there? We, I, if I'd have read on, I'd have known this. M's my sis doing a fab job yeah. and a kiss as well. There you go, M's. Yeah. You're doing a, a fab job. Um, so thank you for that, Auntie Debbie. Debbie comes up and helps us sometimes on uh, certainly with the bike race days because she's um, an A and E nurse. Oh, wow. Okay. So, Another one of our heroes. Uh, uh, I'm loving that one. That is so cool. Um, David Vivian, one of our drivers, and he's with Wiltshire College as well. Castle Coombe is one big family. Much love. That confirms that. Um, I know that Tim says uh, Minnie Dorsey and then Pippa Gore says as, uh, Cutie Pie, but I'm not sure whether she's referring about my daughter about you, Chris. I'm not sure, mate. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Definitely uh, not me. <laughs> Sean Wynn says, can't thank the medics enough uh, for what they do for us all. That's the grass cutter. He's the grass cutter, apparently. That's what uh, um, Rob Jones called him, apparently, when he's out on the yeah. bike. He likes cutting the grass. And I need to have a chat with you, actually, Sean, because apparently my wife tells me you could have some better advice on the uh, the clothing front. So we need to have a chat about that at some point. So drop me a line, please, mate. Uh, that would be good. Um Lovely to see that Karen Potter. Sorry, guys, that's blanked you out for a minute, but oh, I'll get rid of it in a second. No, that's fine. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll remove it any second. Yeah, <laughs> Chris peeking above. Uh, we watched the whole program as if we were at the circuit. Really felt like we were uh, part of it. Thank you for all the hard work. I was excited as being at Coombe. The presenting was excellent. And nice to see you both. And Clive, too. Did mean you had to behave and you couldn't pick your nose. 
Do you know what, Karen? You're not wrong. Is that the, the pick nose wasn't a worry, but it was more what we say when we turn the mic off. There was suddenly no mic off. It was live for the whole seven hours. And uh, and well done for you for, for sticking to it. And absolutely, Clive had a struggle, uh, sadly, with the technology sort of wandering around and what have you. And uh, and he admitted he wasn't totally comfortable. And But Tom was there trying to help him. It was difficult. He did a fabulous job bringing the interview. Ian had problems with being over at Old Paddock, which is sort of like removed. But I've got to say is that um, the the big, big hero on the coverage was Kevin. Kevin from Bristol Sound Systems. And bearing in mind, that's Bristol Sound Systems. And yet he's ventured into doing other things and cables. We then had cables removed uh, with the four post removal damaged cables for us uh, as well. It, it, just an absolute hero to keep it going. For me, I just got to talk rubbish for seven hours, which, as my <laughs> wife tells me, is what I do naturally anyway. Well, I enjoyed it down in the medical centre anyway. So. Oh, cool. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, that's good. It was either You were either going to enjoy it or it was going to drive you insane. One of two things. So. Yeah, it was quite I, nice. I, I have to say, actually, Dorsey, um, from our point of view down here, having the cameras up on the monitor uh, um, in in reception actually is is a help to us because we can have a um if there is an incident we can have a, an initial quick look um and see what see, see where the vehicles are and it, it just gives us a bit more sort of heads up on what's going on which in fairness i think even as you can probably imagine uh, race control were largely saying the same thing they, yeah. you know, they, they were seeing stuff before they even it got called in. Uh, doesn't mean it's definitely going to be there because I can assure you it was not uh, an easy fix. I think there's a few people that want to chat to the circuit because these were, would you believe that a lot of these were um, um, uh, camcorders? Yeah. They were actually camcorders that Kevin had got uh, strategically positioned on, on. Certainly the one heading into tower was on a big pole, which is why by the end of the day, it was a bit of a struggle to see. You know, it was a blue Peter. Here's one I did earlier type thing. It was just an amazing job that he did to get it yeah, going. Yeah, did, but did the principle has been there that's been showing us good. Um, I don't think that there's a mass desire to have, you know, a live coverage, you know, visual live coverage because we want everybody coming through the door at the gates for many, many reasons, you know, and I think in reality, people would still rather be here because it's the sounds, the sights, the smells, the camaraderie, yeah. all of that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> it's, it is an interesting point, uh, Chris Pearson. It would be good to have harmonised procedures throughout the UK circuits. Yeah, It would be absolutely amazing. And I think but, this is me sort of putting my thing out there. I find it really difficult um, because I know... I've looked through the blue book. I've done a lot of looking at sort of the medical regulations and they are so open to interpretation mm. um, that unfortunately it means that you potentially get different standards, um, not always for the good. No, sometimes it'll be um, cut in corners, won't it, at the end of the day? Yeah, unfortunately. And, and what, I mean, I, I personally would like to see... Um, once a year or even maybe once every two years that um we're able as a community so cmos medical rescue that we can come together um yeah. and have a a conference as it uh, you know where we can sit and have a gym wag we can discuss what everyone's doing and things like that um i did say to uh most sports CEO, Hugh Chambers, that um, I was quite disappointed when at the Auto Sports Show they stopped doing the Watkins lecture because that was brilliant. Because that, yes. you know, it was a safety lecture. It's a safety lecture. And even when they did interviews, but it's that networking thing. Uh, um, okay. So, I mean, Zoom meetings are, are, are fine, but actually, sometimes you just want to go off into a group or you want to sort of, you know, it's that networking that I think that that we need to go back to or, or we that we could do with i agree and i mean you know let, let's keep it in perspective is that we know for example um you know even if we just take health is that there is still a disparate nature out there that you know they suddenly created one system that was going to bring all together it was never going to work and so there's back to the you know trying to still finalize that it isn't easy no one's saying it's easy schools for goodness sake are all separate that that means that there's issues that arise there it isn't easy that said circuits harmonizing would be easier because there's a smaller number of them and what have you 
uh, at that point, I've also got to say hats off to Castle Coombe hierarchy, both at circuit and racing club level, is that they do listen and take on board massively seriously what you guys and Dr. Sue Smith in particular uh, are saying. And they're going, well, they're the experts. It's not just making commercial decisions all the time. It's like going, well, no. I mean, as Pippa Gore says here, um, our rules are to protect you above and beyond, as in you, the racing drivers and the public at the circuit, can't fault the caring. And that's the point. And I've got to applaud, having watched it from the now proud enough to be on the board of the racing club um, and, and watch the importance to, I mean, Sue is God in all honesty, is that literally they, they will hang on her words and they will do what she says and that is the way it's got to be because you've got to turn to your experts not make every decision commercially and they yeah. do not, they do not as a racing club and a circuit make all their decisions based around commercial, it was like what needs to happen Yeah, yeah. I mean I as, I don't like spending money um, where I can help it. Um, we for here, I mean, it, this year our costs have obviously escalated massively, um, mainly because um, a lot of our suppliers that their prices have gone up um, a great deal, um, and. You know, obviously, we're having to get in more stuff. We're having to get more wipes in, more face masks, and things like that. And um, we're not doing it out of things that we want. It's not luxuries that um, I, I could spend a lot of money on luxuries if someone was to give me a lot of money. Um, well, not even luxuries. I could spend a lot of money, you know, <laughs> on other things. But um, it, it's um, we we try to keep it. We don't go overly mad. We're, we're, we're all of what we need. Yeah. Um, and that's the point is it's managed and that is cool. But, yeah. you, you know, there are not, we talked about corner cutting and there are some that it's all about the commercial. And I, and I, and I just wanted to take the opportunity to say congratulations to the guys and, and to make sure those of you who are watching. They've been good. Yeah, know that they are looking after you. Hence, you know, Tim Perry's also said, uh, one of the Orange Army, just remember it is protecting you and making sure you're okay rather than you collapsing later on. And that's the point. We care about you as an individual. And that's the beauty of that certainly us as Castle Coon, we most definitely do. And that includes the visiting championships when they're with us. They become yeah. the, uh, the, the, the stepchildren. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're part of the family you know they're, they're welcome they're part of it i'll get in trouble for that one now sorry that was funny but uh chris uh, chris pearson says the wreck to sell barriers are the best thing since sliced bread totally agree they are amazing even from mine from a commentary perspective is that i don't want cars out i want them in and still racing the amount of times they can go off hit them and then come out and carry on racing it's ridiculous yeah. It's brilliant, brilliant. Um, the Rector Sales proved their worth on the pit wall Saturday. Yes, because, and in fact, I saw um, that uh, we were getting the, the, the question from uh, one of our drivers, Kevin Jones, who crossed the line in the pit wall in his Noble, and he was after the, uh, the video footage of that, and uh, uh, it, it, it definitely helped him there, so that was good. Um, let me just check. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Uh, Valid point. Uh, Craig Shield says it can be the same with new marshals. The excitement and adrenaline of a crash on track can make them run out to the crash before it's really safe to do so. And yet I was guilty of this when I started. And that is a great thing is it shows the the, the, the flip side of adrenaline that, that causes an issue. Yeah. Yeah. And it was the same for me when I was young and foolish. And now I'm old and foolish. But um... <laughs> I testify yeah. to that. <laughs> <laughs> i can't say that you looked after me didn't you mate on saturday i appreciate it thank you mate um sean win the grass cutter says if i win the lottery i'll build a new room for you all so he won't you know <laughs> talking about the extra room thank you, sean. thank you sean and i mean you know in all honesty if there's any sort of like building company out there that you know i'm sure that the circuit could look at you know whilst they might not have the money especially after all of this but you know sponsorship opportunities or something re okay. reciprocal deals of some description you know anybody out there with any ideas put it over you know i don't know i can't speak for them but i'm just thinking out loud of things that can happen and, and, and on that note if anyone want is interested in helping um the the castle king racing trust 
um, which is a registered charity. They help um, both for, uh, the safety for the marshals, comfort of the marshals, and they help us a lot, um, donating money so we can buy um, equipment, monitor, patient monitors and things like that. Um, the trust as well, I believe, bought the, uh, the Ford Ranger fire truck about 10 years ago. I think that was the biggest purchase so far. Um, so if, they, if people want to help, they can always donate to, um, donate to that. And that sort of helps us in the long term as well. Where's that? Can you remember? Castle Coombe Racing Trust. Castle Racing Trust. Uh, I believe it can be found on... They've got a track day coming up soon as well. Charity track day. Yeah, they have got a charitable track day coming yeah, up. Yeah, the, is that the supercar one, isn't it? No, no. this is their own. This is... Um, we're both searching the internet now, aren't we? We are just only because uh, oh, there we go because it's at the Castle Coombe Racing. Uh, let me copy that because, as if by magic, I shall then do uh, that. That's the one. That's the one. So car, uh, CC Racing Club, so Castle Coombe Racing Racing Club dot co uk forward slash info forward slash racing dash club dash trust so you know go and have a look at that and and i agree because i'm always aware of that because it gets discussed in the uh, in the board meetings from the castle Coombe racing club uh it is it's 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 like it's, it's like a benevolent fund is that is that fair to yeah. call it yeah. that yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and it deals i think the sort of essence is to like um ensure like sort of some safety like improve the safety for the marshals sort of things that may well help the marshals while they're out on track and those sorts of things um so yeah it's a really good sort of way of supporting the volunteers essentially yeah no absolutely so please please i'm going to leave that up there for a little while please go and have a look it is a big deal i know a lot of the competitors actually go and and contribute or or even down to some like say their prize money they 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 they, they just give straight away the prize money certainly like the dave allen trophy the amount of times that the, uh, the, the the prize money gets put into that which i've got to say considering the money that they're bracing to go uh, paying to go racing yeah. you're absolute yeah. heroes thank you for all of that because it is very special um Robin Nathan says, was lovely not having to complete PRF in the rescue unit. Yeah. Yeah. So usually we ask um, our um, rescue crew to start patient report form um, on the drivers um, as soon as they get into the vehicle. So they'll start taking their, de their, their details and things like that um, and try and do a basic, uh, a baseline set of observations. Um, what we said for certainly for the, the first race meeting is actually hold off on that for now. Um, we'll do it all back here. Okay. Um, just one less piece of paper to hand between different people. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the key point is it's about the, the, you know, things that are moving from person to person is the big deal. So, you know, again, yeah. who knows that could be something uh, interesting one from Pippa Gore that says uh, a really good change from an assembly point of view closing off in front of cafe bar h for two reasons one more seating for marcus at cafe bar h yeah. absolutely and two safer for us in assembly as cars coming from one direction so what that means is that yeah. for those of you who might not get it is that uh, the the road that runs along sort of parallel with the pit lane if you will but albeit the opposite direction past the medical center and into the assembly area then sometimes they come down the front of Cafe Bar H and try to turn right into that. But cut shutting that off could be an interesting sort of one-way system to create there. I don't know. Yeah, it was really good from sort of a safety point of view, I think, because when you've got cars coming at you from two directions, it can create a backlog. You sometimes get people walking between them yeah. and actually all queuing up from one direction. It also meant that we could ensure that we kept out the front of the medical center absolutely clear um, yeah. and when you, sometimes when we've got them coming at two directions trying to control the traffic can be a bit of a nightmare so that's interesting that is something that probably you know should be looked at that said flip side to it is that gerald house says had to fill in our own grid sheets on the start line and I relate to that as well, is that me up in the commentary box is that absolutely it's not ideal is to be able to have the grid sheet. So in other words, uh, those 
Yeah, you can just about see yeah. that there with the light is that, you know, that is where I then make a whole load of notes against each of those. Those guys on the start line would have that. But they, I was having to fill in my own and they were having to fill in their own. And I'm not talking as in you get a blank and you put in names. I don't know whether you guys did. I didn't have anything like that. It was just blank pieces of paper suddenly scribbling. I don't know shorthand. I'm not very good. <laughs> and then I couldn't read what I'd scribbled down, not in shorthand, and it was just no good to anybody. So it was, uh, it was, it was a, a tricky one. Um, Incidentally, Dorsey, the um, Racing Trust Charity Track Day is the 19th of August, Wednesday, 19th of August. Cool. Details are on Castle Coombe's events page. Ah, okay, so they've got that on there. Good. So go yeah. and have a look at that. That's cool. Um, <laughs> Great comment here. Robin Nathan also wanted to say, I want to say thank you to all the drivers we had to transport in the rescue unit. We had no arguments for, from anyone in respect of masks and gloves. Thank you, guys. That is good because we never, we didn't know where that was going to go, did we? No, no. It was... Um... Well done. Well done. And thank you to, to Robin for, for raising that point. That's, uh, that's wicked as well. Um... <laughs> Sorry, I was reading ahead there because I've always got to be careful sometimes with these comments. Lynn Hoy says she's got she's got a lucky, lucky Kawasaki mudguard. And she said, what's lucky about it? And the rider says, I'm not the one in the ambulance. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, yeah, the uh, Kawasaki mudguard was the one that was in the ambulance instead. So that's brilliant. That is so cool. Um, Martin Bennett, uh, who do, does the commentary for the uh, the two the two world events uh, as well as Action Days. Kevin is an absolute diamond, top sound guy, hundred percent agree. Uh, Sean, I think that that's assuming yes that we're going to speak. Jump on, uh, I guess uh, uh, Facebook's the easiest one, so just jump on, mate. Drop me a line. Um, and yeah, picking up on the stream, Tim Perry, Blue Peter or not, where I said Blue Peter, here's one I did earlier. It was still an amazing stream. All hell, Kevin. Absolutely. The poor guy was a shadow of himself at the end of the day. He was back and forth and all over the shop trying to keep it working. And he's got prima donnas like us uh, media types, uh, you know, pecking away at him. It was brilliant. Um, let's double check. Yeah. Chloe Creed says, might need to move the Castle Coombe Med Centre team. Very well organised. They're, they're trying to poach you up to Santa Pop. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your hands off, Chloe. They're That's ours. You're not, you're not having them. I love Santa Pop, though. I actually, um, I'm quite sad is that I'm in my early stage of my commentary and I got the uh, lovely opportunity to go up there twice to, to be part of the commentary team. Uh, once over the gantry with the, uh, the, the 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 drag strip, which is just ridiculous. We had a jet car go beneath us, and the crew there yeah. said, "Right, you hold this, this, and this, and we'll hold this." And I just laughed, thought they were joking. They went, "No, seriously." <laughs> and this whole blooming thing moved. And then if I was over in the action arena with, obviously, you saw me interviewing Tony Dixon the other uh, yeah. well, the other month or whatever. That's because yeah. I'd worked with him there and uh, the the drift team and uh, and uh, you know v various other people. It is such an amazing an atmosphere there sadly I've, I've not been asked to go back again really no. um, but fingers crossed I, I might get the chance to have a giggle there because the the live action arena is so much fun can you you imagine yeah. me letting letting rip in the uh, in the uh, live action arena having some fun with the yeah. crowd as well I can I enjoyed never that been, never been to Santa Pod um, have you not I recommend no, it I never had the chance to do you know what I had not until I got uh, the opportunity to go there twice? Um, and, uh, you know, I miss it in general. I mean, it's totally different. You know, it is not, it, you know, it's not what you expect when you go to, say, Castle Coombe or wherever else. It is a totally different experience, but it is mind-blowing. So if any of you watching have never been to Santa Pod, I recommend it massively. It is just such a unique situation. It is amazing. Go and do it. Really, really good. Um, lovely comment. Uh, Med Center family. Hashtag Med Center family says Lee White. Saddest day ever yeah. when I gave it up. You would love it. I'm assuming that someone else was talking about getting involved. And, you know, yeah, Lee, uh, you know, it's a shame to see that you're gone. I, maybe. I thought we I sacked him. No, I don't <laughs> <think>. <laughs> no, we do miss Lee. Um, 
and then that's why you, you you have to mate and coming up to the commentary box as well mate you can come and get a van once we're allowed to not be excessively socially distanced come on up there as well mate it'd be good to see you buddy uh lots just, of just just to, to say there's a couple of other people that are missing from our crew this year um who haven't been particularly well and um, no. we just want to send our love out to them all um, they know who they are they know who they are um so a uh, big love from us all here um and hopefully they'll all be back, back with us soon yeah, we uh, we all hope so as well. And uh, you know, it is you know fine. We've got Chris and Emma here. It was uh, it was an obvious figurehead to go because uh, um, the three of us have been bouncing off each other both in chat and when we've been catching up and everything. So it was a good opportunity to sort of bounce and talk about the experiences that people don't get to see behind the scenes necessarily. Um, oh, that's, uh, I'm liking this, Keith Rain, who uh, you'll see on the, the, you know, right at the front of the grid. I can send you blank grid sheets, so he can send me blank grid sheets. Please do, mate. Okay. I don't have them. Yeah. yeah, we got that sorted. Joe Shingler says it was good not filling in instant report reports at post ten at Tower. That would be good. Um, here's a flip side to it and this is why it's not as simple just to suddenly put these changes in place robin nathan says a one-way system or block in the road outside cafe bar h may cause issues with turning the rescue vehicles around when race days are busier was tricky enough on saturday actually do you know what now you say that i did see that it became austin powers moments a couple of times didn't it back and forth and back and forth and you're right at the moment we we had the luxury of of a relatively quiet paddock because it was just our championship so yeah but it's just things we can work on incidentally i have to apologize to robin because i haven't replied to his email yet um i will get it done we're going to sit and have a chat about it and and, and and make some replies to him there we go so yeah i'm just a facilitator me aren't That's i <laughs> uh sean wins now going take care stay safe do mate um santa pod is great says chris pearson martin bennett four inches of movement in that santa pod gantry with fire force on the line there you go martin knows it it literally is i mean it's like a yeah. narrow sort of thing over and, and it is four inches of move it's the only time i forgot to actually commentate when it launched off because i was that terrified i had no idea what to expect and this thing suddenly went and i was like <coughs> And thankfully, they were still talking, and I just literally eventually went, <laughs> and that was about what they got out of me for that. Well, that's probably why I've not been back there, actually, isn't it? But <laughs> <laughs> that was only the the, the show car, the, uh, the the jet car that was just yeah, making them fire force. It was was cool. Um, oh, Gerald Howe thinks Chloe was actually talking about joining Coombe. Uh, oh. Do it, do it, do it. Although yeah. I don't think so. Chloe said, Martin Bennett, I literally jumped every time. It is, it's terrifying. It's just incredible. Um, it is, it is cool. Uh, and you've been called useless, Christopher, <laughs> for not replying to those emails, but he loves you and he gives you a kiss. Um, right, just very quickly, whilst we've still got everybody there, uh, I know we we're supposed to do a bit of review, but uh, let me just sort of like whip Sorry. through this. No, I mean, I said that there was every chance we were speaking to you guys, but bear with me for a minute. I'm just going to do this so you've got a bit more uh, uh, freedom to do this, but I'm going to whip through just a quick review. In terms of the saloons is that uh, we started off, race one was the saloons and race five. Adam Preble, he took the, the, uh, the victory in race number one by a massive margin, 25 seconds in the end. It was amazing. But of course, sadly, we lost the likes of, of um uh, gary preble his turbo just went he got a great start and his turbo went as he was going up haven rise that put pay to him for the rest of the day if you've seen the picture it was absolutely destroyed uh incidentally adam preble managed to take that victory with a problem with his diff that i think from memory he was saying it was it was borderline of him going third or first and if he goes to first good night vienna to the engine as you know but that did mean he didn't make it out for race number two sadly um in terms of um, the other people that didn't show up, oh, sorry, Simon Thornton Norris had a non finish. He had an oil filter uh, came loose, which was spitting oil everywhere, which then meant that Terry Thorne, sadly, his Ford Fiesta hit the tyres up at S's. Maybe on that oil, I'm not sure. But Kevin Bird came second, uh, although I think he spun on that oil as well. But he actually leads the championship at the moment after a pair of second places. 
although he went out in slicks on the second one in the rain, which was a bit brave and meant he span a couple of times. But that Nissan, with its new paint job, looking amazing, came uh, second in both races. Dave Scaramanga finished in third place in that first race. Uh, the top five were actually Class A cars this time. Um, but he didn't make it out for the second race because his strut top mount went, apparently. So that was a shame. Hopefully we'll see that Sirocco back. Tony Dolly in fourth place. Dave Spiller in his new mini. It was actually his dad's mini. Uh, he made it out and uh, and came fifth place. Then it was Mark Sutton, who we saw earlier, was absolutely buzzing. He came sixth overall, which gave him Class C honours. Uh, Anthony Weeks out in the Saxo in Class D took seventh and Class D honours with Chris Hignall in eighth second in class D and Stuart Hignall I'd meant to check this actually he had an issue in that first race but he was back fighting again come race number two Rob Ballard was really sad he actually put it on the uh, uh, front row uh, for both races and then he got didn't get to take place at all due to engine failure Josh Cook of course British touring car ace Josh, Josh Cook was due to be racing in a Renault Megane and he qualified well engine problems put him out but catch this this is the amazing thing a British touring car superstar out with a failure he stayed for the rest of the day helping out mechanically with other drivers how amazing is that really impressive john lannan sadly as well clutch failure in qualifying meant no races he qualified seventh in both races and that put him out in the second race alternator failure put mark sutton out and an alternator failure also for anthony weeks meant that on the first lap he was straight out but he also was fighting against the loose ball joint he found out afterwards and a main power lead had snapped which meant he was actually running on battery alone race number two and uh six was the formula fords fabulous battles in this absolutely amazing field and incredible battles luke cooper took the first victory but was in a great fight with felix fisher the whole time uh, and it was rolls reverse felix fisher took a very wet race and actually won it by six and a half seconds over luke cooper but luke was coming on very strong at the end but he got sort of embroiled in some battling early on which put pay to that third place was uh, bryce uh, Aaron in uh, good to see him there for the first time and third in the second race was David Vivian uh, in terms of the DNS we had uh, Nathan Ward great to see Nathan Ward back again but sadly had a misfire at the end of qualifying that actually died completely on the start line and and was very said it was terrifying with the, the field coming round him and he got away with it pushed it off into the grass and he got away with it thankfully um, and they then took everything apart. They put an old battery back in again uh, just to make sure. Disconnected absolutely everything just so that there was nothing there. that they And they're going to have to find out what it is. And he then had a good race in the second one. Sadly, it was very, very wet for his first time back after three years away. And so he had a couple of grassy excursions. But in his Class B car, he still finished second in Class B on his first weekend back out racing. Fabulous job there. Absolutely brilliant. Um, Class B winner in the first race was James Tucker. It was good to see him. Lots of fans were there watching the uh, the feed there for James Tucker. And Paul Barnes came home in second. Class C was won by Mark De Rosario. Second was James Colburn. And Bob Higgins, great to see him back, was uh, third in Class C. In the second race, Felix Fisher, Luke Cooper, David Vivian in Class A. Class B was won by James Tucker again. Nathan Ward in second and Paul Barnes in third. And Class C was Mark De Rosario, James Colburn and Steve Bracegirdle. Uh, in the GTs, what a field. The cars that we had in the GTs was just incredible for the first race. The second race, kind of sadly, some of them decided to call it a day because it got very, very wet. Lucky Kira, first time out in a race in his brand new Ferrari 488 Challenge car. Beautiful car and was so, so quick. And he managed to win that. It was a Class C car, intriguingly enough, but he won that by six and three quarter seconds. Over Ollie Bull in this Voxel Tigris silhouette, silhouette that was coming on very strong at the end. So watch out for Ollie Bull. I think we might see lap records this year, is my prediction. He won Class A, though. Second overall, but took the Class A honours. Kevin Jones in third, which gives him second in Class C. Lee Frost, great to see him back. In fact, Lucky Kira and Lee Frost, I'll be commentating on both of those two this weekend at Snetterton in the GT Cup as well. But Ke uh, Lee Frost was out in a BMW M3, and listening to his interview, it was a bit new for him to be uh, a long time since he'd been in something a bit more sort of agricultural, the real raw BMW M3, as he was calling it. Tony Bennett, so good to see Tony Bennett back again in his Caterham. He came fifth, which gave him Class B honours, and Sonny Gill took class, 
Class F honours. Sadly, we had a few incidents. Dominic Shepard in, Shepherd in this awesome Audi Super uh, Tora GT. Just you wait till you see that car. It is beautiful. But his bonnet blew off uh, going up Avon Rise. Not quite sure what. And they weren't able to get it fixed again. So sadly, that put him out completely. There was also contact between Chris Everall in the Janetta, the dark red Janetta, and uh, Keith Butcher in that beautiful Audi R8. Uh, at Bobby, so the second of the chicanes, sort of three quarters of the way around the circuit. Um, in terms of Chris Everall with the Janetta, the crew went back to base to try and get new left front upright and discs, but they had no front disc bell, so they weren't able to make it out, sadly. And Keith Butcher in his Audi R8, uh, it bent the right rear suspension link and they had no spares at the circuit, so sadly that put pay to them for the rest of the day. Uh, in the second race, though, Oliver Ball took the victory, absolutely dominated, 44 seconds. In fact, he lapped all by the top three. So the other, there was only two cars he didn't lap. Amazing uh, uh, drive by uh, Oliver Ball in that one. Of course, he is a past champion already. Tony Bennett came second, which gave him Class B honours. Jamie Sturgis, last year's champion, still running the 99, not the one I see. Uh, obviously, his lucky number. He came home in third, also Class D honours. And Jajit Singh Verdi took Class F in that one as well. Some great uh, performances that we were seeing during the course of that as well. Sadly, Ruben Taylor in his Peugeot 206 silhouette. That was two DNFs. So hopefully we'll get that sorted because that looked a, a pretty wicked car as well. Uh, last but by no means least. Sorry, I should have said, by the way, the uh, saloons were sponsored by... Uh, Oh, I need to check. It's by Samco Sport. So thank you to Samco for supporting uh, that one. They need to change the uh, the image on the timing screens for that one, though. Formula Ford sponsored by Premier Financial Planning. So new guys to have on board. Thanks, Premier Financial Planning, for joining us. Reese Insurance on the GTs and uh, EBC Brakes. Again, we need to change the uh, the image on the printouts from TSL. Uh, it's EBC Brakes uh, that you'll have seen some great videos coming up on that one. They sponsored the Hot Hatch, which an incredible incredible grid 27 cars started the first race sadly mark nicholson in his clio was off at quarry he didn't manage to finish it nathan nichols didn't start the first race new drive shaft let go but he was back for race two and did well but chris southcott took the overall victory by 4.7 seconds out of the debutant dan brown in his uh, honda civic a uh, black and red honda civic watch out he's going to be good he came second they were both class a tony cooper one of the key protagonists, he came in third place, which gave him Class B honours. Sean Govard in his beautiful WAS Racing prepared uh, white and blue Peugeot 106 GTI came home in fourth, which gave him Class C honours. Stephen Jensen, he did amazing in the new liveried Mini that they've got, which is the Class E, obviously, for the Mini Cooper S's. Um, and he's now got a zebra livery instead of the orange that him and his, his dad, Erling Jensen, that we all know uh, very well, were piloting last year. He did an incredible job and he finished fifth overall class E honours. Will Self was coming on strong to finish in sixth place. In terms of other class uh, honours, Lewis Clark won class F, 10th overall. Um, and some interesting debutants that were there as well. Darren Dufford were mentioned earlier. Well, not so much a debut, but he's been away for a good while. Chris Southcott actually qualified back in seventh place for the second race. So we enjoyed him coming back through the field. It was really, really intriguing. Uh, and he did manage to take the victory. Really cheeky, actually. He came out in the pouring rain. He came out of quarry and Dan Brown was ahead of him, the other Class A car that he was fighting with and had got a great start on his uh, debut race weekend. And Chris Southcott came out and was flashing his lights all the way down Farm Strain uh, straight towards the S's. And, uh, and he got past him. Whether it had anything to do with it, I don't know. But I don't think that Dan Brown uh, will, will do that again. Mike Cotton said, Dan Brown debuting overall or just Coombe? I think it was debut overall, but I might be wrong. Um, I'm not sure. Will De Claudio saying congratulations to Sean Govard. First time out with a new car and two class wins. Absolutely beautiful looking car, Will. Uh, and well prepared. Uh, absolutely brilliant to, to be done there. And uh, let's have a look down through this. Sorry, Class C. There you go. Sean Govard, 
that you mentioned there is that he came third overall in the second race, which is a Class C victory. So a fabulous job there with Adam Higgins just behind him in the Class A Ford KA. It's a bit harsh, that, because it's underpowered, but he pedaled it well in the rain, that's for sure. Will Self behind him. Then Nathan Nichols in sixth, which gave him Class B honours. Stephen Jensen in seventh, which gave him Class E honours again. Michael Bland, great job in 12th place overall, which gave him Class F honours as well. Great to see the likes of Nick Mizzen back out there again. Tony Cooper, difficult race. He doesn't like the rain. And apparently it steamed up where they were sort of holding for quite a while. It steamed him up and it was a real struggle for him. He couldn't see where he was going, which is a shame. But they honestly, those guys dished up incredible uh, excitement. In terms of the championships, quickly before we bring the Masons back in again, is that in the GT Championship, it's currently being led with 14 points by Tony Bennett with two class victories. Ollie Ball, and uh, Alan Hamilton, oh, sorry, no, in second is Jamie Sturges, last year's championship, only one point behind with a, uh, a, a second and a first in class. And then you've got Oliver Ball and uh, Alan Hamilton on 10 points apiece. Still, obviously, lots to play for, but it was a double header, so it's still important to look at it. Uh, the Saloon Car Championship currently being headed by Kevin Bird. As I said earlier, he's leading the championship with uh, a victory... Uh, Actually, that's... Oh, yes, of course, it was a victory. It was a class victory for Kevin Bird, a class A win for him because he was beaten on the road by Simon Thornton Norris in race two, which means he got the class victory and the second when Adam Preble won. So he's on 19 points. Wonderful story taking shape here. Second place, only two points behind. It's the Hignall brothers, Chris Hignall and Stuart Hignall. Sorry, Stuart Hignall, Chris Hignall, if we take class C, class D, both on 17 points at the moment. That could get interesting. They had a fabulous fight in race number two. I enjoyed that. And Tony Dolly sat there in third place on a year that's very special for the saloons. Uh, 25 years that the saloon car's been going and he took place, he took part in the first ever saloon car championship at Castle Coombe. Uh, finally, in terms of championships, the Formula Fords, it is Felix Fisher leading the way based purely on a fastest lap. 44 points to Luke Cooper's 43. How close is that? That is amazing um, because Felix Fisher got fastest lap in the first race, but Grant Palmer got fastest lap in the second race. So it just means that there's the one point difference between them and David Vivian, great name from the past, sat there in third place at the moment. So that was the uh, review of the championships. Let's quickly bring in and uh, unmute the Masons. Thanks for bearing with me, guys, just to sort of go through that one. Uh, it was important that we uh, we we did that and uh, just sort of quickly check in the comments. Go Hignall, lads, understandably, says Tim Perry. Um, and uh, just check in this comment because there's... Uh, let me just read this. Uh, right, it's a long message, so I'm going to do it. Mark Nicholson says, I never, I've never had anything to do with the medical centre team uh, before and with the best will in the world i hope i never have to uh deal with them again but they were absolutely brilliant on saturday after my off track excursion into the barriers if i can donate 50 pounds to buy them a drink i will happily do it if someone tells me how oh thank oh, you what send a beautiful it comment the, that's lovely absolutely lovely if they send it through to the um castle Green racing trust um so that the, the link that you put up so um, at the bottom still. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be great. So, yeah, there you go. That's bless you. Yeah, bless you. That That is uh, um, a lovely. And that's uh, that Mark Nicholson uh, was in the hot hatches in the first race. That I think it was off at Quarry that just meant the checkered flag came out a couple of minutes early. Instead of it being a red, it was sort of like a, a, a checkered. He managed 10 laps and was going great in his Renault Clio. Uh, and it did look a bit secondhand, Mark. I hope that we're going to see you back out again, mate. That was, uh, it did look secondhand, but great to see that you're fine. And I agree. I hope that he never has to see you as well, mate. That's that's the weirdest thing is that we all say that. And, and that must be, you must have a thick skin, you two. No, I always hope I never see anybody. Yeah. A good day for me is doing nothing. Uh, and and absolutely. We all, we all, we all sort of feel that way, which is, is just such a weird one. You know, I hope that you guys have got a feel for the appreciation from, uh, you know, from all the viewers. And that's just a soup son of them um, that, that you all see. I hope that everybody that's watching has got a bit of a, an insight, not just, uh, um, you know, on the characters. It's lovely to bring you guys to life as a couple of members of the crew, uh, important members of the crew. But to also understand a bit about what goes on. Hopefully we've educated a little bit. 
whilst having a bit of fun while we're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. 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 Any uh, any <laughs> comments from you guys? Um, no, I, mean, I, I, I want to say some thanks, um, obviously, to the entire medical team, um, not just the ones that were here um, for the race day, but for, for them all, um, for all their hard work um, over the, the past few years. Um, I'd also like to say a massive thank you to John Ford. Um, John Ford, um, mm -hmm. with two weeks notice, basically fitted out the second medical car. Um, I think with the light bar and the sirens, I think he wants to kill me actually because um, I, I kept making it more complicated for him. Um, and he's, he, he's obviously he's, he's not had the best time um, recently, so we, we just thank him for all his time and effort. Um, and obviously, just, just, just to say thank you for all the racing drivers for coming back. Um, and and so we look forward to seeing you. Um, not in a professional capacity. Not in a professional capacity, but on, um, on the 1st of August. Well, you won't see Emma. No, I'm on holiday. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming back from my holiday. This is commitment for you. I'm coming back from my holiday to do the race meeting and then go back on holiday. I'm, I'm really scared now because Emma just shook her head. I'm really scared. <laughs> bless you, bless you, bless you. Um, that is that is lovely of you uh, to do that. And thank you, guys. And, and if anything, it really doesn't surprise me if you two. And, uh, and, and I do say you two because although you could turn and say it's Chris coming back, it's a compromise for both of you that that is happening. So thank you both for that. That is, is just so lovely. Uh, hopefully, we're going to get a Give slightly... Me a break from that. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, you know he doesn't mean that, Emma. Anyway, we both no, know. No, he does. That. It's fine. <laughs> he it's doesn't. Great for me as well. So it's not Yo, a problem, Chris. That's true. That's <laughs> true. We get that one. No, it's uh, you know, it's it's very special that um, we're all back together. Uh, hopefully, a lot of you have seen that it happened and that, that you know everything was in place. The medical care was there. You were all well behaved. So hopefully, we'll see even more of you back on the first of August. Um, yeah. With a bit of luck, fingers crossed, we might even see spectators. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. I know no more than you as it stands at the moment. Um, it's just, you know, it, it, it is so much fun. And, and it is. Thank you to the drivers that are coming back because I know that actually there's going to be quite a number of rounds towards the championships because the racing club have done a good job to sort of put it back together again. So it is going to be a legitimate championship fight during what's left of this year. It might be over a shorter period, but we're still going to get a good fight. But we appreciate that things have been tough for a lot of you. And it's great to see you come back. And it's lovely that we've had a lot of you um, that have come out and sort of said, you know, like Simon Thornton Norris said, come on, we've got to support the, the club, the racing club and everything they do. And that is lovely to hear that. We've had several drivers that I'm still uh, are being forced to remain uh, anonymous that actually put money to fund the trophies as well for, for some of the championships. So it's a great spirit. And it is led, um, you know, just sort of epitomised for me when you look at the Orange Army, the Green Army, the, the Red Army, the Recovery Army, all of that sort of stuff. It's what makes the day tick. So, Chris and Emma Mason, thank you so much to you. And that goes to the whole team. Thank you, Dorothy. It's been thank lovely. Thank you to everyone. Yeah. Take care, thank you. guys. So thank you to those guys. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to put you back in a green room and I'll be back in a second. But thank you to everybody. Sorry, it's it's a, a, you know, a long show there, but that's because, frankly, there was loads to talk about. Clearly, you've enjoyed it because you've stayed with us. So thank you very much for that. Um, I'll have to let you know when we're back next because I've lost track of everything. But we will be back. We'll have more things to cover. Uh, and keep abreast of what's going to be happening with the race days. But from myself, Dorsey, from Chris and Emma Mason, Tom Davis from his sick bed, get well soon, Tom Matey, and uh, we'll all be back very soon. But from us here, stay safe, stay sensible. More things are open, which is fabulous news, but please, please stay sensible. We want to have us all back together again at the circuit. Have a good evening. Goodbye.